other end of the spectrum, you supplement, you put on hormones. How do you determine when you phase out? How do you end up? I'm assuming at some point you come off. How yeah. do you determine yeah. Well, that's a good question. A good question. The question is, how do we phase out? How do we know when to go off, if ever? That is a good question, and I don't know the answer. We evaluate on a year-to-year -year basis. What are your risk factors? How are you feeling? You know, what's going on in your life as far as your health? Um, so, you know, I. I there, were, there are many, many women that take hormones their entire life. I know my mother took Premarin until you know, she was 80, and nothing ever happened. She was OK. You know? um, so years ago, with this Women Health Initiative study, all these women were pulled off of hormones. And so you know, we, we, I mean, we want to make smart decisions. And it's not that there are no risks, because there are risks. But just evaluating your risk on a year-to-year -year basis is the best thing. And obviously, the lifestyle. If you're really active and you're, eat, you know, you're eating well and you're supplementing and you're, you feel like you're... Um, and the other thing is, is osteoporosis. So it does um, help with bone density. So sometimes we, we choose to put a woman on, even if they're well past menopause, on hormone replacement because they have osteoporosis and they, we need to... It's more... It's more risky to for them to break a hip than to go on hormone therapy so the in addition i have some patients with multiple sclerosis that actually their symptoms improve when you put them on hormones so that would be another reason you know so if the, you kind of weigh the, weigh the risks and benefits yeah. could you talk about um osteoporosis and osteopenia and the benefits or adverse um, reactions of boniva Medi so the medications for um, for osteoporosis and osteopenia, uh, the biphosphonates, uh, they. So, you know, there's a lot. There's uh, rarely women may on these these medications can get. It, it's a rare occurrence, but I've had a couple of patients. I've had one that had a femoral fracture because of the bone that was being laid down was not strong, um, or and. I don't. I haven't had anybody, but there's some um, there's some reporting of um, of jaw fractures. So, uh, you know, if a woman has severe osteoporosis and it's a very risky, and um, I support the use of biphosphonates, um, but we try everything else first. There's a lot of choices: um, hormone replacement. Um, obviously, weight bearing exercise extremely important. Make sure their vitamin D and their calcium is is adequate. Um, using myocalcin, which is a calcitonin nasal spray, is an, is a, is an option. Um, and um, I think there's any other options here. Oh, using uh, something like that binds to estrogen receptors, something called Avista, that is not, that is not, est that is not a hormone, but it does um, have the same effects as, as estrogen as far as building bone. So. Are we, we're, okay. Is there any more, are there any more questions? Yeah. What's the relationship between hormone replacement and pelvic pain? So the, the question is um, the relationship between hormone replacement and pelvic floor. Is, is it helpful for pelvic floor dysfunction, for pain, and pelvic floor pain? Um, I'd have to think about that. Um, there's so many causes of pelvic floor dysfunction. Now, if it's something like um, vaginal atrophy or something like that, yes, that would be helpful. And, and, and what happens also in menopause, sometimes the, the um, structures in the pelvis can get kind of loose, you know, so, so estrogen could help with that. But there could be other causes of pelvic floor pain. and. Um, I think of our physical therapist, Jean, who is a specialist in pelvic floor dysfunction. And so I, uh, if it's something uh, musculoskeletal or something um, like that, I, I'll refer to, to one of our, our specialists in physical therapy for that. So I can't quite, I can't say for sure that that's going to cure.
cure any pelvic pain when there's, there's so many different causes. So time-wise, are we, we're good? We have more time? Okay, <laughs> and more questions? Any more questions? Yes. Do you have anything like a checklist or something that you use to ask about family history to find out the right questions and who do you ask what kind of thing? Well, when I do an intake, um, I will go through, you know, spend an hour plus, uh, usually an hour scheduled uh, with a patient and certainly go through their family history. Yeah, um, I guess I'm asking if, 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 you're, if the patient is trying to ask someone about family history, is there a, a checklist or things to try to look for, ask for? Oh, if, if a patient is thinking about... Trying to find out more about their own family, oh, their family own history. <laughs> I was adopted, oh, okay. so I, you know, if I, there may be an opportunity to find out some medical history, but I don't uh -huh. even know what to ask. Okay. <laughs> um, so the question is, um, how do you find out about your medical history? What kind of things do you ask? Okay. Do you ask? Uh, okay. Uh, well, obviously, any um, risks of cancer, heart disease, stroke. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, there's a whole list of things, but the, the yeah, the the big ones um, are those. Um, any other genetic, uh, neurologic um, diseases? Um, so okay. that's probably. Maybe just get a blank form, right? Right, 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 right.